you're in another creative rut, I'm there with you, but I find it my job, my job, my personal responsibility to help you break out of these creative blocks because we all get them, right? So if you want my help for some tips of how to break through that creative block, drop me one of these and let's get started with how we can get through this creative block together. Tip number one is to make time every day to do your art, okay? And when I say do your art, you don't actually have to be doing art per se, but make dedicated time for creativity, all right? So let's say that, um, I don't know, you're on a plane and you know, you'd normally be painting it uh, for an hour that day, but you're flying and you can't. Well, use that time to sketch, write down some ideas, do some research. Uh, you don't have to be actively painting or doing art to flex that creative muscle because your creativity is a muscle. And by working it every single day, it will become looser, more flexible, and you will have a much easier time overcoming these blockages that will happen to your creativity. It's natural, it happens to everybody, but dedicating consistency every day is the first step in making sure that you have less creative block, um, I guess you can call them uh, occurrences. No? Outbreaks? Flare-ups? Flare-ups. Yeah. So by doing art every day, that will help you from having creative block flare-ups. All right, the second tip to breaking through that creative block is to know your thinking spots, okay? And some of these creative block things, you know, we're Jerry's Autorama, we sell art supplies, but this is really for anybody that wants to do creative thinking, whether you're a writer or you're a dancer or any of the arts, right? Know where you do your best thinking, get your best ideas. Um, for me, like one of my great thinking spots is in the shower. Also, a lot of people do some really great thinking uh, while they're driving. Uh, I don't know if it's sort of like the sensory deprivation of the shower or like the kind of like um, meditational state you're in if you're like driving down a highway. Um, there are all kinds of spots that just sort of spark creativity. Some people like to get outside. Some people like to go to art supply stores. I know that when I walk into our own stores, it's, it's very stimulating, right? Um, even like bookstores, like when you can go to them, are a great place to just go and, and look around and see what sparks your interest. And especially in a bookstore, um, you've got all kinds of information at your fingertips to research while you're walking around. That's just some of my tips of places. But, you know, I want to know what are your best thinking spots. Are you conscious of that there's certain places that you do better thinking than you do in other places? But let me know down below where your best thinking spots are because I think that would be a good list of things for people to see to help them maybe get the idea of, oh, maybe I would think better in the shower and maybe we can all do it together. I just made it weird. Turkish bath. It really happened and I would do it again in a heartbeat. So maybe your spot's in the shower, maybe it's in an art supply store, maybe it's in your own backyard. Find your spot, know your spot, and that's the place where you're gonna be at your best to break through that creative block. Tip number three to boost your creativity and break through that creative block is have a dedicated spot to art, man. You, not art, man, but have a dedicated spot to make art, comma, man. Uh, when I say that, I mean, if you are going through the process of like, oh man, I, oh, I gotta paint this, I, I have this great idea, and then you have to like set up a studio by the time you get everything set up and your paint's all out and everything's ready to go, it, it kind of like takes you out of it. Like that takes a little bit of that steam out of the energy you had for the creativity. So having something ready to go, it doesn't have to be big. You don't have to have a dedicated studio, even a room. It could be a corner, a desk, depending on what you're doing. I do a lot of watercolor. I can do just about everything just right on my desk, which is great, and I just keep my supplies in a drawer. Um, that's very easy for me uh, doing mostly watercolor, but for oil painters and whatnot, having some space that you dedicate to make your art is important. And along with that, a place where you give yourself permission to make a bit of a mess. Now, I've mentioned this in my videos before. I have obsessive compulsive disorder, okay? I have a number of things that are my little quirks and stuff, uh, everything from well, I guess if I'm going to just be completely candid here, uh, I, I don't touch change, uh, door handles, um, sometimes my children if they're a little drippy. So the reality is, is that giving myself a space where I say, I relinquish responsibility for this space. I, I have to remove ownership of it in my head and I'm allowed to make a bit of a mess here. Okay. And that's just me with the obsessive compulsive disorder. But for the rest of you normal people out there, 
giving yourself permission to make a bit of a mess, it kind of just loosens you up, okay? But that's gonna bring us to tip number four, which uh, is gonna have to sort of rein that in a little bit. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's get to tip number four. Okay, whoa, that is quite a mess. And yes, we just said give yourself permission to make a mess. But what we have here is chaos. I really don't think that this is a very good way to productively produce art. I mean, I don't even have like a solid place to put this canvas down. Um, there's things all over the place. Can I find stuff? Does your studio look like this? Some people's do. Uh, if you're constantly struggling to find a tube of paint or the brush that you need, you might have too much chaos. So tip number four is organized chaos. And how do we achieve organized chaos? I'm so glad you asked. We got to check out our new product, the Mesorax. Now this is organized chaos. I've got all my supplies out. I can easily find what I'm looking for, but I still have plenty of room now to put all my substrates down, canvases, papers, panels, uh, canvas pads, easels, whatever it is. I've made space. In the chaos, I've organized it, and that is the beauty of these meso racks. So what is a meso rack? You might not have heard of it. Meso racks are these individual racks. There's actually three separate parts here, okay? What we have right here is the center rack, which will hold large tubes of paint, smaller 37 milliliter tubes of paint, and brushes. You also have a side piece which is just for paints, and then another side piece which will also hold large tubes, small tubes, and brushes. Uh, and they all kind of can fit together if you have that much need for that much storage. You can keep adding to this as much as you need. But as you can see, everything's right in front of you, okay? You don't have to go searching for that tube of cadmium yellow. It's going to be where you left it, okay? This is a great system for anybody that wants to find that balance between chaos and organization where they don't have to have the fear of making a mess, but they can still find their stuff in the heat of the moment. Because if I'm fumbling for a filbert in a drawer full of brushes, oh, it can be frustrating because sometimes they're hidden amongst the flats. They kind of look alike if you're not seeing the curves. Yeah. So that is the beauty of these meso racks, having all of your supplies out in front of you. And the design of these racks are so cool. You got to check them out. So firstly, these things come completely flat, all right? They are easy to assemble. It's almost like a little do-it-yourself builder kit. Uh, they're lightweight. Um, they assemble very quickly. All you have to do is get the pieces out and then loop the rubber bands together to join the uh, joints together. And when you're done, you can fold them back flat again or you can leave them out. That's up to you. And as I said earlier, the system is in individual pieces. You've got the paint and brush rack, the paint rack, and then the corner piece. And then there's also a set of all three in one that we have available. They're sturdy, they hold together, they don't fall apart or feel flimsy, and they just look really nice, in my opinion, in, in your studio or wherever your painting space is. Guys, we've had these racks for less than a year and they've already sold out twice. They go quickly. I'm gonna link to them down below, so if they're in stock, that's your opportunity to get them. Like I said, you can buy each piece individually, you can buy them as a collection of all three and save a bunch of money, and then even if you want to continue to expand, like I said, you can buy the pieces individually. So if you decide that you want more places to hold more tubes of paint, you can just buy this paint rack over here and just continue to extend it out, okay? The sky's the limit with opportunities to grow and build this out. These will sell out quickly, so please keep that in mind if you find that they are in stock. The fifth and probably most important tip I can give you, regardless of artists, um, bakers, writers, whatever it is, whatever your art is, the most important tip, number five, is write it down. You gotta know where you're gonna have those thinking spots and have a way to get it down. Now, if you're in your car, you might not be able to write it down, but being able to take a voice memo or something uh, easily is a good thing if you can do that. Now, I've mentioned before that one of my favorite thinking spots is in the shower, right? Doesn't seem very um, easy to write things down there. Well, I actually went and bought one of those space pens that writes anywhere and a waterproof notepad. Uh, and I've literally been able to take little notes in the shower as I've gotten ideas, whether it was something funny I thought of or an idea for a video. And I put it down right in there, okay? Know these things spots and write it down or you will forget it, okay? So having those things on paper and then, and then knowing that you have them down there, you will, when you get to those parts where you're like, oh man, what am I gonna do? Oh wait, I took notes and you're prepared, and that's a beautiful thing. I also recommend, because inspiration can come from anywhere, whether you're out in the field or actually just from a dream, keeping a pad of paper by your bedside, that's something that I do as well. Uh, sometimes I'll wake up with some idea, or I'll have an idea in my head and I'm so worried that I'm gonna forget it, 
I can't sleep. So writing it down kind of allows me to like say like, okay, I have it here. I don't have to worry about, you know, forgetting it now. It's it's on paper. All right. So that's my fifth and final tip. I think the most important tip probably of all is to write down when you do have an idea you like so that you can always go back to it later and not forget. So please drop me a thumbs up if this video was helpful to you. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to be notified when we post new videos. And as always, follow me on Instagram at Mike Najeri, uh, where I'm going to continue to be your creativity coach and try to help you through this creative block because we are all in this together. And again, as a reminder in the comments below, put down where your best thinking spots are and maybe you have tips that I didn't bring up today that help you. Please put them in below. We are a community of artists here and it's important that we all share and develop our ideas together because that's how the great minds kind of came together to create even bigger and better things, okay? This is an artistic renaissance, all of us here on YouTube, okay? Join the community, contribute to the conversation and I can't wait to see what you guys have to say. I just literally saw like this white thing fly into my eye and now it lives there and it's probably laying eggs. Uh, yeah. Sasha's like, why do you always have to say something laid eggs? And I'm like, because of that reaction. <laughs>